Hello, if you've seen my channel before, you'll know that often I make my videos based on what I've been asked to do by viewers. Today's video is no different. I was asked to show how you would engrave a polar bear. So that's what we'll look at. Today we're going to look at engraving a polar bear. And if you have been here before, uh, first of all, welcome back. Um, if you're new here, I hope you'll find something that is useful and interesting to you. But certainly if you've been here for this series of videos, you'll know that I tend to draw out a template and attach that in the description so that you can print that out and engrave along. That's a little more tricky if I am engraving a polar bear because there aren't many of them walking around the northeast of Scotland. So, as most of you would have to do, I have to rely on a photograph as a reference for the engraving. That can cause a problem because photographs, quite rightly, are copyright. People are trying to make a living from their photographs. But there are sites you can go to where they're happy for you to use their photos. So I went and looked on one that's called Unsplash and I'll put a link in the description. And there I found quite a nice little photograph of a polar bear that I will be using today. When I'm engraving anything, an animal, a tree or a plant, often I'm trying to get the form of that captured in the glass. So if it's got a, a tree trunk, I like it to look three-dimensional within the glass. And there are two real ways of doing that. The first is to use intaglio engraving. And I have another video which covers intaglio engraving and how by hollowing out the glass you can create that illusion of three-dimensionality. The, the, the shape looks as if it's suspended within the glass. However, I'm going to be engraving this onto this bowl. It's quite a large bowl, but it wasn't a very expensive one and it's not very thick. So if I cut too deeply into that, I could have a real problem. That means I fall back on the other method of creating this illusion of form. And it's the same thing that an, an artist, uh, uh, either painting or drawing, it's the same method they would use, which is to look at highlight and shade and to use that to create the illusion of form. Now, if you watched my video on engraving pet portraits, you may remember I said it's much easier to engrave a light coloured animal than a dark coloured animal, and that is true. When you do your engraving, you're making things white. It's different. You can't really, well, other than polishing them out, you can't make them dark. So a poor bear, you would think, would be quite easy. However, there are issues in engraving animals which are completely white. And I know that's the case because every so often I get a message from someone, a, a comment, saying they've tried to engrave a dog or a cat or a light coloured animal and they've ended up with a white blob on the page. So because we're engraving a polar bear and I know a polar bear is white, it would be very easy for me to go over all of it with a, a diamond bar. And what I'd end up with is basically a white silhouette of a polar bear. And that's not what we want. We want to get the illusion of depth and shape to this. So to help me see where the light and the shade falls within this picture, what I did was I ran this through an app and there are lots of these apps around. And what they say they do is turn a photograph into something that looks like a pencil sketch. There aren't maybe many practical applications for that, but in this case it's very useful because if I put this photograph through it, what it gives me is a very clear indication of which areas are light and which areas are dark. And that's going to help me a lot when I come to engrave this and show me where I need to put the shape in. And even more interestingly, if I put it through at a different level and a different kind of filter, if you look at the original photograph, you'll see the the nose on the bear, for example, is basic, basically, it's just a black blob. Whereas I put it through at a different level, whilst the drawing itself would be far too light for me to engrave from, it does mean I can start to see 
where the nostrils are in the nose and the structure of the nose and where the little highlights are in the eyes. So in this case, using that type of an app is really very useful. So having done all that, what I'm going to do now is transfer this image onto the bowl that I'm going to be using and then we can go off to the workbench and start engraving it. I've speeded up the engraving here so that it doesn't take too long for you to watch but obviously what I've done is I have stuck the photograph that I'm interested in copying onto the bottom of the bowl. It's on the inside of the bowl and I'm currently engraving on the bottom, the outside bottom of the bowl. I'm using a white Arkansas stone just to outline the picture and you can see when I take off the photograph that those lines now stand out and I can see where I have to engrave. I'm going to start in this engraving from doing the darkest bits first. I'm going to work from dark to light. So I'm using the white Arkansas stone and engraving over the area of the nose, the mouth, the eyes and the inside parts of the ears. With those bits done, still using the white Arkansas stone, I'm looking at the photograph all the time and picking out those areas that are particularly dark. So in between the little toes there are dark areas, for example. The white Arkansas stone does engrave the glass, but when I polish that, which we'll do later, it will start to look very, very dark indeed. And that is the effect I'm looking for. I don't want to leave a bit that's not engraved. I don't want it to look like I've forgotten to engrave a bit. So starting with the white Arkansas stone and then polishing that back will give me the very dark tones. And I've just moved on a little bit here so you can see how that's starting to look as I've been over the whole of the body picking out the darkest areas first. Now even with this white Arkansas stone which I'm going to be polishing out I'm trying to follow the lines of the fur. Having done everything I want to do at this stage with the, with the white Arkansas I've moved on to a medium sized round diamond burr and I have a water dripper going. And I'm using this now to engrave in all of the bits that I hadn't done with the white Arkansas stone. So these will be the whiter bits in the drawing. The diamond leaves a rougher surface, so when I polish it back, it won't go to such a dark tone as we get from the white Arkansas stone. Through all this process, whenever you see me engraving an animal that has fur, I'm trying to move the burr so that the marks that are left behind follow the lines of the fur on the animal's body. So all of the time I'm doing this engraving, I'm looking up at the photograph, looking to see which way the fur lies, and I'm trying to make sure that the two marks that are left by the diamond bar, follow the lines of the fur. And once I've done the whole body, it's starting to look a bit more like a polar bear. And at this stage, I can begin the polishing out process. So these bits that I had originally done with the white Arkansas stone, even with quite a quick polish with this grey rubber polisher, become very dark. And that is obviously what I want to see. As I said at the beginning, if we're going to make this bear look white and look as if it has some form, some shape to it, we need those shadows and the shaded bits to make the whites stand out. So I'm going over the engraving, looking again at the photograph for where the shade, shaded areas are, where the shadows are, and going over those with the polishing rubber so that I can establish those dark areas in the engraving. Having done that, I'm now moving back to those bits which are going to be the very darkest of all. The nose, the mouth, the eyes and the shaded bits inside the ears. I want these to be as dark as I possibly can. 
and also any bits that after the polishing I think still need to be a little bit darker I can go over the previous engraving that was done with the round diamond bar with this white Arkansas stone and it will engrave off some of the texture that was left by the diamond bar and then I can come back and polish it again and get these bits to become just a little bit darker. So as long as you have enough thickness of glass you can keep going over areas engraving them to make them lighter, polishing them to make them darker until you get the effect that you want. So I'm back with the grey polishing rubber going over those bits that I had just engraved over again with the white Arkansas stone to get the very dark tones. Now I am repeating all of this on Little Bear at the side here but I'm not going to show you all of that. Having put in uh, the, the main areas of shade it's time to start adding some of the lighter areas. Now I've moved to, it's quite an old rat's tail bar and I've flattened the end of the bar because it is quite old and it was needing a little bit of attention. But I can use that, I can use the edge of that bar to give me some fine lines and I can drag it down more to give me areas that look quite like the fur in the picture here, thicker areas. So it's quite a versatile bar to use for this. And with the, I've got the picture in my hand, obviously, so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm looking at that very closely and looking for the lighter areas. And I have to pick those out all the way around the beer. Again, I'm missing out bits, but you can see where I've been. You can see how those white lines are starting to really show up against the areas of shade that were left behind. These lines that I'm putting in now with this rat tail bar, these are all of the final highlights on the beer. And it's really at this stage that the benefit of having those dark shades starts to show. Because we have the dark shadow underneath, each of these individual little strokes shows up so much better and it looks so much whiter and brighter. And I have to be very careful to make sure that I, I pick out all the white bits round the eyes and round the face and even a little glint of light in the eye which you can see if you look at the light coloured version of the photograph. So you'll see me going over an area and then going away to do something else and then coming back again. I'm not necessarily always very methodical. It's sometimes when you look away from something and then look back to it, that you see better what needs to be done. So I'm just, as you, as you can see, I'm holding the photograph in my hand, going through and looking for all the whitest areas, round the tops of the ears, along the top of the skull. There are some more white areas along the top portion of, of the face and above the eye. And all of those I'm going to be picking out now. And those are, those final highlight strokes are what makes the whole engraving come alive. And as I've said, you wouldn't even see them if we didn't have the shade from all that polishing previously to show them up. It takes a little while to put in all these highlights, but that's what makes the fur look as if it's really fur. That's what makes the form of the beer look so much more real and natural, not like a cartoony beer, maybe not like a proper photograph of a beer, but, but as natural as I can make it. So I'm taking my time going over the entire beer with the rat's tail. See, back again, told you I wasn't very methodical, back again to pick up areas that I think need to be even whiter and I will continue doing that until I'm happy that I've got enough contrast between the highlights and the shadows to, to create the form of the beer. I 
it. Now I've got a white arc and soft stone and you can see I've moved to the, the very light version of the picture because that way I can see the detail of the structure of the nose and I'm just putting in the little lighter areas so that the nostrils are more visible. Oh, back on the diamond bar again, the diamond rat's tail. Picking out some more lighter areas that I've obviously have decided need a little bit more work. Honestly, I could just keep going over and over and over this, but eventually you have to decide. You have to just decide that it's done. So I think that's it. And here is the final engraving. Now I hope you can see how leaving in all those areas of shade helps the highlight to show up. That is what I would recommend, certainly, if you have to engrave a very white animal. It seems to work for me anyway, but I'm sure you will find your own way. Anyway, I hope you found something in this video that will help you in your own engraving. If you have, then please come back and look at future videos. I think for the next one I'm going to be engraving some fancy fish. Uh, but in any case, thank you for watching and I do hope you'll come back.